A very good evening and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held talks with the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi, at Cairo Airport prior to His Majesty's departure. His Majesty reviewed the fraternal bilateral ties with the Egyptian President and discussed the means to further develop them. His Majesty affirmed the importance of consultations and coordination between the two countries in the interests of the two countries and people. His Majesty expressed gratitude and appreciation for Al Sisi's hospitality as well as his role for developing the bilateral relations. His Majesty also discussed current regional affairs with President Assisi and expressed appreciation for the key role that Egyptian Arab Republic under the leadership of President Assisi play in defending the common interests of the Arab nation and protecting its national interests. His Majesty affirmed that Egypt represents the region's safety valve given its position in terms of strategic and security and wished Egypt and its people for their prosperity and progress. For his President Assisi praised the outcomes of his talks with His Majesty as well as the role His Majesty plays in developing bilateral relations as well as His Majesty's positions which have long supported Egypt and its people. He wished Bahrain for their prosperity and progress under the leadership of His Majesty the King. Upon His Majesty's departure from Egypt to Bahrain, His Majesty was bid farewell by President Assisi, a number of officials from the Egyptian government as well as Bahrain's ambassador to Egypt. His Majesty sent a cable uh, to President Assisi to thank him for his hospitality to express appreciation for the President's efforts in further developing Bahraini-Egyptian relations and for Egypt's role under President Assisi's leadership in defending the interests of the Arab nation and its security. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to Bahrain yesterday after his visit to the United Kingdom and Egypt. His Majesty the King held talks with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi, in which the two leaders discussed the historic brotherly relations linking both countries, in addition to reviewing the latest developments on the Arab, regional, and international arenas. Upon arrival in the kingdom, His Majesty the King was welcomed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. In a new international achievement reflecting the global impact and influence of the contributions of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the World Health Organization will honor His Royal Highness on the 20th of May as a world leader in an unprecedented recognition in the history of the organization. The event will be held at the WHO headquarters at the UN Palace in Geneva in the presence of heads of states and governments and ministers of health from the 194 WHO member states, which represent the supreme body of the organization in decision making. The international honoring of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa is a unique event in the history of the World Health Organization and is considered of great importance and value. An invitation was addressed to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister by the Chief of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Capriciosus, in which he expressed pleasure and honor to invite His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to attend the 72nd World Health Assembly due to the great contributions of His Royal Highness in the health field, his vision, ideas, policies, initiatives and achievements that have been accomplished, which became a role model for the entire world. This high international honor reflects the organization's recognition of the role His Royal Highness the Prime Minister has played in activating the organization's efforts aimed at achieving its objectives, missions and functions, including providing leadership on issues critical to health, establishing partnership that require joint action, promoting and monitoring their implementation, building sustainable institutional capacity, monitoring health status and assessing health trends. The work of the World Health Organization is linked to a field of human life that can be measured and viewed. It is based on facts and actions that express themselves with clear evidence. 
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister was chosen by the World Health Organization after a careful follow-up on the progress of the health sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain, which is worthy of becoming a role model for other countries. In a meeting last November with His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, the Director General of the organization expressed pride in meeting with His Royal Highness and hailed His Royal Highness's leadership and support of the Kingdom of Bahrain's efforts in the health field. He noted that Bahrain has become a successful model in this field and added that the World Health Organization would like to convey the Bahraini experience to other countries. He also praised the government of Bahrain under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for following up on the development of the health sector and for its keenness to strengthen cooperation with the organization to support global health promotion efforts. Cooperation with the World Health Organization has become a consistent approach of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister since the adoption of the Al Ma'ata Declaration in 1978. His Royal Highness the Premier called on the organization's member states to provide health care for all by the year 2000 and called for the implementation of this declaration by providing advanced health care to all citizens and residents in accordance with the new health strategy that was launched in 2002-2010. To make Bahrain one of the first countries to develop a strategy to reform and develop the health system in line with the goals of the World Health Organization. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday evening visited the Majlis of Ahmed Mansour Al Ali and the Majlis of the Sons of the late Hajj Hassan Al Ali. His Royal Highness was accompanied by His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa during the Majlis visits. The Crown Prince noted that Bahrain has launched a number of initiatives that have contributed to ongoing economic development and further diversified the kingdom's economy. He highlighted the importance of reinforcing the private sector's role as the primary engine of growth while promoting greater innovative and competitiveness. He also underscored the successful partnerships between the public and private sectors which have resulted in wide-ranging achievements at all levels. His Royal Highness added that the Bahrain is economy among the fastest growing economies in the region which reflects its robustness and resilience. The Crown Prince spoke about Bahrain's fiscal balance program underlining that the strong results achieved so far drive us to continue implementing policies that support fiscal stability and economic prosperity. He concluded his visit by recognizing the vital role Bahraini citizens play in advancing Bahrain's economy and expressed his gratitude for their efforts in achieving Bahrain's far-reaching goals for their part, the Majlis's hosts and guests expressed their gratitude for His Royal Highness Crown Prince's visits.
The Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislation Affairs held a meeting today chaired by Deputy Prime Minister Jawad bin Salim al-Arayil. The members reviewed the topics and memorandums tabled on the meeting's agenda, including bills of law and resolutions prepared by the committee upon request of the government. The committee took the necessary recommendations about them to submit to the cabinet for consideration and adopting the appropriate decisions. The Ministerial Committee also considered proposed laws presented from the legislature and drafted by the Legislation and Legal Opinion Commission. The committee also considered proposals submitted to the government from the Council of Representatives. The committee prepared the government's draft according to responses it received from the relevant directorates. The committee decided to submit the prepared response memoranda in this regard to the cabinet to take the necessary resolutions. The committee expressed opinion on some topics referred to it from the ministries and directorates.